Perspective on Florida Gateway College Television is sponsored by Nutrien. Nutrien, feeding the future. Welcome to Perspective on Florida Gateway College Television. My name is Mike McKee and my guests on the program represent the Florida Gateway College Theater Program here at FGC. We have Todd Siff, who is the professor of theater. We have two students who are also actors. Uh, we have Hunter Cheney and Elizabeth Reagan, and we're gonna talk to them about their roles in the upcoming show for the college. It's called Our Town. We'll also talk a little bit about the last production, which won some awards by the state of Florida. We'll do that when we come back. Don't go away. on FGC TV as well as WQHL and WCJX radios. We welcome those listeners to those two great radio stations for being part of our program today. Todd Siff is the brand new, I guess not so brand new, uh, director of theater or uh, professor of theater here at Florida Gateway College. And uh, first of all, welcome to FGC. Thanks a lot. It's been a great time so far. Now, you, uh, how long have you been here at the college? I've been here since um, August, and this is my first year, but I'll be here for many more. Now, you, uh, I wanted to talk about the first production that you, that you undertook. Now, here, you're brand new. Uh, you're kind of not sure what the community is going to be interested in seeing, and you, you choose a play called Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that decision and... Maybe, how did the kids buy into this? Sure. I'm sorry, not kids, the young adults buy into this uh, play that you, that you wanted to do first out of the gate. Sure. Well, to start a theater program um, from the beginning, I thought it would be wise to start with a play that appeals to everybody. And a lot of people know the story of Alice in Wonderland. A lot of people have seen um, the Disney cartoon version of it or perhaps have read the book. And I thought that would be a great story to start with, is something fantastical, something not your typical uh, experience of a story. And so it allowed for us to have a lot of wild acting choices too. So we were able to have all these crazy characters on stage. And um, part of what I also wanted to do with the first show and with shows coming up year after year here is also have shows that are, are appeal to the children of the community of Lake City too in the surrounding area. And so we actually had a school performance where we invited five different schools from the area and we had about 530 children uh, come to see Alice in Wonderland. Well, and you know, that was kind of a, a years ago, uh, we used to do that kind of thing here and we kind of got, got away from it but it was terribly successful with the kids. I mean, yeah. I, I, we, we actually, in fact, I think we've got some video of uh, that, that first performance. Uh, and Hunter was in this. Hunter, you're in the green outfit. Um, what are we, this is, this is all the characters at one time. It is, yeah, this right. is. Missing the caterpillar, but. Oh, we're missing everybody. Yeah, we're just missing the caterpillar. But this is basically the final scene of Alice in Wonderland, which is a, a trial to see if Alice is uh, guilty of really just uh, being herself. And uh, ultimately, this trial kind of goes awry and everybody ends up screaming at each other. And a lot of, a lot of this play was uh, nonsensical. If you've ever read the story of Alice in Wonderland or seen it, a lot of the, the things that happen in the play don't really make sense. And so this is one of these scenes where it's a, it looks like a typical trial. and. That's a courthouse in the background there, but everything kind of goes awry. Yeah, and Hunter, this is this was uh, you've been in a couple productions here at uh, Florida Gateway uh, College. Yes, what was what was this like doing? Never done a show like this before. This was probably the most the craziest performance I've ever been a part of. <laughs> uh, the wackiest. I've never had to let out so much energy into a performance like like this one before. Yeah, it, it allowed you to be uh, a zany character. Oh, for sure. In the Mad Hatter. 
Well, and, and, and I noticed, uh, Hunter, you, you uh, also told me uh, that you enjoyed being able to interact with the students that were in the theater. And you got to go in and talk with them uh, and kind of play around with them. And, and what was that like? That was probably, I felt like I was at Disney during the improv thing. Like, I felt like I was just a character walking around at Disney and all the kids come up to you and want to want to hug you and they were asking for tea they kept saying tea <laughs> time and it was just I don't know I'd never felt a feeling like that before it yeah was well, amazing what ended up happening is we started the play with about 15 minutes of improvisation that all of the characters would mingle with the children in the audience and kind of invite them into the world before the story really began and so Hunter's talking about that yeah well, and again, I, I don't, Todd, I don't know whether you know, you got 500 kids here that are probably experiencing theater for the first time sure. in their lives. You don't know what kind of impression that is making on, on them to maybe consider this as, as something that they want to do uh, totally. in the future. So there's a method to your madness. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. I, I want to be able to bring theater to as many people as possible. Um, here in the Lake City area and I think children don't have the opportunity a lot of times whether it be for financial reasons or otherwise to go out and see theater and so I think bringing theater to the children and bringing children in on field trips from their school where they don't actually have to maybe they pay five dollars they get to experience a play and maybe if they keep coming back every fall where we have a play that's elementary school age um, they'll eventually get that idea of, oh, I, I, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can be a performer. Maybe I can sing. Maybe I can uh, get up on stage in front of other people, which is a very exciting thing. For sure. let, let me ask you this too. You sure. know, in this day and age of electronics and 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 somehow being able to go into a theater like this and let some of your imagination take over. That's that's something that I think miss, is missing in a lot of our culture now. How, how important is to bring that back and, and to have the audience experience fantasy? Absolutely. I, I think that's a vital part of why theater is so important in our society is that theater is the only art form, and you can say concerts are a version of theater. Theater is the only art form that is live in your face and ever changing. And so bringing us out of our technological dependence for a few minutes just to put that away and to be involved in our imaginations like you mentioned Mike and be in a world that's completely creative and live actors performing in front of you is something different we're used to television and film and even music now a lot of music is pre-recorded and we listen to that pre-recording and sometimes if we're lucky we get to go to a concert but otherwise we're not interfacing with live artists and so this gives us an opportunity to do that Hunter and Elizabeth, uh, again, you guys uh, haven't been doing this long. You're, you're students uh, here at FGC. Talk about, uh, you know, you look at movies and you look at television and there's so many crutches that, that, that the actors depend on, whether it's special effects, whether it's uh, in the theater, it's you, is it not? Yes. Talk, talk about what that's like. And that, that you, it's, it's difficult for, you know, you got to be really good at what you do, right? Yeah, I think in, in movies, they're so, yeah, they know the lines, they know the blocking and things like that, but you have someone stopping the scene, cutting the scene, changing the scene. It's never just flowing from the actor or the actress that's doing it. And so sometimes it's kind of hard whenever you're on stage and you mess the line or you mess up the blocking, you just have to go with it. It's very raw, very real, and it's very in tune with the actor or the actress that's portraying their role and I think in movies the crutch is that you can stop the reel and if someone doesn't like it they cut you out and in theater if you just do that on stage oh well keep going the show must go on so yeah I guess Hunter maybe uh, again you've done a couple plays uh, here at the college and I guess in high school as well but you never hear Todd go cut <laughs> you know that's that's not something that right. you hear uh, so talk about how difficult that is, that uh, you've got to be, it's you. I mean, what, you, you played the lead in this last play. Yes. Talk about that. It, basically what Elizabeth said, it's just raw. You can't mess, if you mess up in the movie world, you can stop it. If you mess up in the, in the theater world, it's just, it's there. The, everyone saw it, 
everyone saw you mess up. You got to fix mm -hmm. it. You just got to cover it as well as you can. You can't go back and redo it. It's just, it's live and it's raw. Well, let me ask you this too. You know, uh, for most people, getting in front of a, two or three people is nerve wracking. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. public speaking is, I think people would rather have surgery or, or oral surgery <laughs> than get up and public, pub, publicly speak. What is it about you? Are you? Do you get nervous at all? It, I'm weird. I'll get nervous when I'm around family, who I'm around all the time, but I can get up in a, in a crowd of about 500 people I don't even know and perform. I, I don't understand it. It's just, <laughs> it's just the thing I've always done. Same for is me. It, is it, 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 um, I don't know. I, th I think I'm more nervous in a small setting like this rather than in a theater because the best thing about theater is that you look out and it's all black and only you can't see these people's faces. They can only see you. And so I feel like if I would see their faces, I'd probably be a little bit more nervous. But once you leave that, the feelings of nervous and, and emotion and things like that, once you leave that behind and it's just you saying your lines and performing to the best of your ability, all those nerves fade away. And it's just like you on stage, the spotlight's on and you're performing. Well, and, and Todd, I, I, the, the two students here are kind of nervous being on this, on this program because again, you don't know what this guy is going to ask. Uh, I don't, you know, you don't know what questions, I don't have anything prepared. Uh, so you're kind of like, hmm, I'm, it's, it's me, but I'm not prepared. <laughs> but if you know the lines, Todd, yeah. right? You, no and problem. Exactly, and, and I think that's, again, going back to why theater is so special is that, like they were describing, theater is in the moment. And if you do have something that happens, like for example, an audience, is, uh, an audience member's cell phone goes off, you as the actor have a choice on stage to go, do I respond to that or do I not respond to that? Mm -hmm. And that's a very exciting thing. And I think, um, yeah, once you know your lines as an actor and once you feel like you're prepared, and that's really what the rehearsal process is all about, is preparing the actors to live fully in the moment on that stage when the lights are there and the audience is there. Yeah. How, how for typically this, this play uh, that, that you did in the, in the summer or, or spring, wh wh how many rehearsals did you have for that? I think we had 35 rehearsals. So you, so let's take us through the timeline. Yeah. Uh, how far out are you preparing for the, the roles and, and casting and how, what is that, how does that process go? So really the process begins with the selection of a play and that happens two or three months before we even get to casting the play. Um, but, and even leading up to that, I'm thinking about what is the set going to be? What is the music going to be? What, uh, what is the soundscape? What is the design going to look like? And then also thinking about, okay, who, it, who can I cast in this? A, do I have enough students? But B, um, and community members, but B, who is best fit for these roles? And then once we get the cast, we have auditions. And then once we get the cast, we have about seven to eight weeks to put the play together. We meet about three or four days a week uh, for about two and a half hours each day. And we put this play together piece by piece until uh, about two weeks out before the play goes up, we start doing runs of the play with everything put together. And that process is always uh, a tricky process and you actors can, can attest to it. We all, in theater, if you've ever experienced it, you always feel like um, this isn't going to come through. Like this, mm -hmm. this may well, I mean, not was happen. There, was, was there a moment like that for uh, Alice in Wonderland where you mm. said, "Hmm, I, they're, <laughs> they're not prepared, and we're I, we're not going to do good here"? Yeah, there there was a moment of that yes, for sure, yes. and I think the moment really came when the the script is again nonsensical in Alice in Wonderland, and the script in our town is a much more uh, solidified script, but. Memorizing lines is difficult, and if you're used to just memorizing small portions of lines, then now you have pages and pages and pages, it gets difficult. And last time in Alice in Wonderland, we definitely had a few moments of like, do we know our lines? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and, and just so the audience, our audience here knows, uh, you guys won an award from the, the, the College uh, Activities Association Correct. in the state of Florida. Uh, you guys were recognized for the play. They came from the state and they uh, watched it. 
they commented on one of the characters uh, who was played, uh, I think he was the, what was he? Noah Lindsay? No, Noah, yeah. Yeah, he was the <laughs> caterpillar. That he got, he got uh, recognized for that, yeah. uh, but the cast was also recognized for their, their good work. And, and again, I, I wanted to mention that you have probably, from young to old, you had the gamut in, in Alice in Wonderland, because Noah, Noah's in his mid-80s. He is, he's in his 80s, and uh, I think the youngest student that participated was 15 years old. Um, and the same is true of Our Town, which is happening in April. It's um, the cast, I think, the youngest is 15, and Noah's in it again. Okay. Uh, yeah. He has a, a nice role in this one as well. Yeah, what a great uh, transition to our uh, break here. We're going to take a break, and we'll come back. We're going to talk about the play that's taking place uh, this spring called Our Town. We'll continue our conversation with uh, folks from the theater here at Florida Gateway College. We'll be come back. Don't go away. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover their unique mix of all kinds of traits. Where'd Wiley go? Where's Wiley? Ah, oh, there she is. Pa? Do you remember being an ancient wolf? Do you ever feel the call of the wild? You're a renegade cop, and I'm a con woman with nothing to prove. But together, we could really solve this murder. They're a little bit of a lot of things. But all of them are pure love. Welcome back to Perspective on Florida Gateway College Television. Uh, TV, I mean, you get to take a break, you know, so we got to, all right, what are we gonna do next? Uh, we're gonna do uh, a scene from uh, Our Town, but first let's talk about Our Town. Sure. Uh, Todd, the, this is a play, um, how was this chosen? And I mean, were you looking at number of cast members and things like that? Sure, um, Our Town is a play um, written in 1938 um, and it's a play by Thornton Wilder, and here's the copy of the script actually we've got here. And um, this play is about small town life, and it's about all the different characters that appear in small town life, and it's about young romance in small town life, and there are three acts of the play. The first act is a typical day in this small town of Grover's Corners, which is in New Hampshire, and the second act is the marriage of our two main characters, George and Emily, who are played by these actors uh, beside me here. And then the third act is actually about Emily's death, and it takes place at her funeral. She dies in childbirth very early on in her life, and we see uh, this small town mourn for this young uh, life that has been lost. And when, I, when choosing this play, I... It's the second most produced play in the history of the United States. And I think it is because it really talks about American life and what makes American life great. And it talks about the hardships of American life. And it talks about that small town nature, which I think we can relate to here in North Florida as well. And so I think the play was chosen because of that relationship between North Florida, where we are at Lake City, and uh, the small town life. Well, and, and just the, the two stars are here, uh, who, and I know you probably, you're smiling like, ooh, I, I don't, I'm not the star. Uh, yeah. no. That's great, that's great. But you guys are going to do, um, you're the leads in the play. Uh, you pretty good friends? Is that? We knew yeah. each other before. We've done a show at FGC before about two summers ago in 2016. We did Beauty and the Beast, and we met then, and we were friends, but since he lives in Live Oak and I live in Baker mm -hmm. County, we never saw each other. Um, and then it's like fate brought us back together. So <laughs> Yeah, so you guys are going to do a little bit of the play? Yes, if you'll let us. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, what, what, what are we going to see? What, 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 uh, what scene are we going to see? Um, this is a scene where, um, in the first act, where George and Emily, they're friends because they're next door neighbors, but they are still really awkward around each other. It's an awkward stage where you don't know if they like each other. I really like George and he really likes me, but we don't know how to talk to each other. And so we're doing our homework at our windowsills and he's asking me for a hint because he doesn't know how it's to talk to me. Because okay. stupid. Well, let's, let's, uh, <laughs> let's look at a scene with uh, Hunter and Elizabeth. Go ahead. Let's let's see let's see a little bit of the scene. Psst. Emily. Hello, George. Hello. I can't work at all. The moonlight's so terrible. Uh, Emily, 
Did you get the third problem? The which? The third. <laughs> Why, yes, George. That's the easiest of them all. Really? I don't see it. Could you give me a hint? I'll tell you one thing. The answer's in yards. In yards? How do you mean? In square yards. In square yards. <laughs> yes, George. Do you see it? Yeah. In square yards of wallpaper. Oh, wallpaper. <laughs> I see. Thanks a lot, Emily. You're welcome, George. The moonlight's so terrible. And choir practice going on. I think if you hold your breath, you can hear the train all the way to Kentucky. Don't you hear it? Hmm. What do you know? Well, I guess I'd better go back and try to work. Good night, Emily. Good night, George. Wow, that's, that's good. <laughs> How long did it take you to, to be able to do that scene well, to where, I mean, you're, you know it pretty well. How long, how long did it take? After the first couple of runs, you kind of pick up on the lines. Um, and this is fortunately a very short scene between yeah. George and I. Um, so, and this is still a super immature part of our childhood. And so I feel like everyone has related to this where you don't know an answer. So you ask someone who does and you still don't know it and you're a little embarrassed, but luckily that person, me being Emily, is um, able to help George a little bit to where he can finish his homework, but flirt at the same time. <laughs> now this is, uh, this is gonna be a quiet show. It's not, you're not gonna have big numbers, big yeah. musical numbers. Yeah. How, how much of a challenge is putting that on and, and worried that the audience is, you know, that we're used to, I mean, sure. when you look at, at some of the movies that people see, if it doesn't have two explosions before the <laughs> opening credits, <laughs> you, you lose interest in, in the movie. Right. Uh, talk about totally. that. I, I think that this play does a really good job of making it relatable. And um, even though it's written in 1938, it's, it's been produced since it's been written and it's, you know, a lot of years later and we can still relate to it and so I think the quietness of the play is going to be really nice it's going to be it's almost going to feel like hopefully you're it's a, a hug in some way <laughs> like a warm hug and there's some music that's uh, part of it as well there's a choir in the play so there's some songs that are sung and it's a, a something that's familiar to everybody there's a wedding in the play and there's a funeral in the play and the kids go to school in the play and we see the inner life of the home in the play. So it's all familiar things. So I, I hope that audiences can relate to that element of it. Well, and, and any, anyone who's fallen in love uh, can relate to this. And I, so I think that if you're in high school and you may have a crush on somebody, this is gonna be a play that you can relate to. If you're an older person, your romance from your childhood and then relationships and in, in marriage and, and then of course death at the, at the end, uh, are all something that people can relate to. Now, this is this play is taking place in April, um, and I, I I wanted to bring. You've got these posters. I don't know whether you can. I don't know whether we can see this. You've got. This is one poster. This is another poster. You'll probably see all over town. And this is a, a third poster. Talk about the three posters. Sure. And and how did they come about? Because sure. they're all, they're they're different. They're very. They're very uh, unique for in, sure. in themselves. For sure. So we're actually collaborating with the uh, graphic design department on these posters. So these were all made by FGC students. And each one of them, um, I met with them like I was a design client. And we actually had three or four meetings. And we talked about the play. They all read through the play. And we talked about what elements do we want to see in an advertisement? And how can we tell the story uh, in one poster? And so we came up with these three different ideas and I'm excited to share their work um, with the community and see all the different responses to the different posters. Well, and, and Todd, I think what you're doing is you're bringing together the entire college family in, in, in the play. And we need, I, we're not probably gonna have time to, to do it all in this, in this one show. Sure. Uh, but you, you're talking about design for promotion. You're talking about providing uh, some instruction on theater lighting. and. I wanted to make an announcement that the college has invested almost $200,000 in the new lighting system in the Performing Arts Center, which is going to 
kick it up another level. Absolutely. But you're going to have students that are going to be taught how to run those those lights. That's that's my intention is to be able to create a theater program here that if anybody wants to go into any aspect of the theater or entertainment world, they'll be able to get some training here and be able to go into uh, the entertainment world. So I'm having students, and we had it on Alice in Wonderland as well, is we're having students um, not only run lighting, but run sound and run backstage and run curtain and be able to do all of the different aspects of theater. Well, and again, uh, we're gonna invest some money into some sound equipment because this is gonna be a, a, a low show. I mean, you're yeah. gonna have to have some amplification in it uh, for the audience to be able to hear, especially these intimate scenes that you guys are, are gonna be a part of. But so it's gonna be a well-rounded uh, effort. Not everybody is good at acting, right? I mean, but, but everybody <laughs> wants to participate. Absolutely. And so this is a way for everybody is, to be involved. This is a way for everybody to be involved in some capacity. And we actually have a few assistant directors involved in the show as well. So for anybody out there in the community that's interested in participating in theater, this is my invitation to you. Uh, my email will be here uh, soon, but yep. it's yep. Yep. Todd. Uh, so he's, he's a d the director <laughs> just came out in him. Uh, uh, but uh, we have a graphic. There it is. There's Todd's. Uh, <laughs> email address and you, your telephone number you can you can if you have if you're not good with email and you want to leave him a, a message on uh, his phone uh, that that's his number the direct line to your office feel free to reach out and and again this is an invitation to anybody who wants to participate in any aspect of theater um, whether that be backstage or on stage uh, we're going to be doing three plays a year and actually this year as well we're also starting uh, the theater summer camp for kids and this is for ages 8 to 16 and that's June 24th and 25th, so look out for that as well. Tell you what, we're going to take one more break, and when we come back, we'll give you all the details on Our Town, where you can buy tickets, and when you can attend each one of these shows. Hopefully, you'll come see it more than one time. We'll do that. Don't go away. You're watching Perspective on FGC-TV. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. Welcome back to Perspective on FGC-TV. My name is Mike McKee. My guests on the program today have been all representing the theater department here at Florida Gateway College. Todd Siff is the theater professor, director. He'll be the director of the play Our Town. And the two lead actors in Our Town are Hunter Cheney and Elizabeth Reagan, uh, and they are with us as well. Guys, the play is coming up here soon, uh, the 1st of April, not on April Fool's Day, but here, here are the dates for the play. Uh, the 3rd and 4th at 7, uh, Saturday is the 6th, and that's a 2 o'clock matinee and a 7 o'clock show, and then you've got a, a, a last show, kind of the big blowout on Sunday at uh, 2 o'clock. Adult tickets are $10, $7 for students and faculty, seniors and children, you go to fgcthunderticks.com and you can put it on a credit card. You will have a box office that will be open prior to the show if you want to buy tickets. Uh, but guys, get your tickets early uh, and support theater here at Florida Gateway College and hopefully you'll come back and you'll bring some kids who are uh, going to participate in your summer camp uh, and we'll do a little promotion of that as well as uh, the play that's coming up this summer. Because what, what do you, have you decided what you're gonna do this summer? Uh, the Ooh. name has not been released yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're waiting on rights. Now Hunter, um, Hunter, Hunter knows something because he just, <laughs> just giggled down there. Well, there's been a lot of uh, yeah. debate in our theater uh -huh. world on what the musical would, would be. But um, we will have a summer musical and that's going to be June 21st through 23rd. So look out for that as well. All right. All right. Well, thank you for being on the program and thank you for watching Perspective on FGC TV. Until next time, I'm Mike McKee. So long.